Hey there beautiful teachers, if you're doing online lessons and you're wondering how on earth to get assignment sheets or written assignments to your students then you're in luck. I'm going to share you with you three ways you can do it in this video. First of all using Google Docs, second of all using PDFs, both of which are freely available on my site, or third of all a bit of an analog hack for those of you who really don't want to do this in typed form. Let's get started with Google Docs, first of all. We have a template for setting up assignment sheets in Google Docs. It is available on the blog on this page, which we will link to, and it's also available directly to Vibrant Music Teaching members inside the library. So that's where I'm going to open it up from. I just click on this button to open it up. It'll automatically ask me to make a copy in my Google Drive. So if you're going to use Google Docs, you have to have Google Drive set up, but it is free up to a certain level. What I need to do is click make a copy. And that'll set up a copy of that inside my drive. So what I recommend you do is first of all, change any things that you know you're going to want to change for all of your students, and then save this as your template. Okay, and then you're going to open up your drive and make a copy of this for each of your students. Once you've changed anything you want to change, you can then make a copy of this one by one for each of your students and leave this as your template version that's blank. I'm going to make a copy, I'll call it Susie and that is going to be Susie's assignment sheet for the week. So if you want to use it for just one week, you're going to write the date there. Otherwise, you might leave all of Susie's sheets in one doc and just add pages as you go through. So before Susie's lesson, I would write in what we're going to work on here. So let's say a C major scale. And then dance and then another piece is called celebrate right practice steps play bar four five thousand million times I'm only joking I would never write that to a student but you get the idea you write in any notes that you know in advance for your student so do this before the lesson and then at the lesson, during your online lesson, you're going to adjust this as needed. You can then either email this to your parent, to the parent of Susie, by downloading it. So you go to download and download a PDF if you're going to do it that way and just attach that to an email and email it to Susie's mum or dad. Or you can just share this with their, uh, Susie's parents and then they'll be able to view it each week. So if you want to not have to email the parents every week, that can be a great option is to just share this and then update it as you go through with new pages all the time so they know they can hop in and check the latest file. Our next option is a PDF, a fillable PDF option. That is on the blog here, there's a limited version, or for members, there's a full version with 64 different composers in it, and instructions on how to do it, but I'm going to walk you through that now, just in case. So I click here to download the composer assignment sheets, and then I'm going to actually download that to my computer, so not use it in the browser here, but download it fully. I'll put it just in my downloads. Then I'm going to show you, I'm going to open up the downloads folder, and make copies for each of my students. Okay, so here's my downloads folder, here's the sheet. What I would do is move this somewhere that makes sense on my computer, and then make copies for each of my students. So you can just right click, or I'm holding down Alt and clicking and dragging, that works on a Mac. So then I'm going to copy it for each of my students, and I'm going to rename it with the student's name. Again, let's go with Susie. So this is going to be Susie's doc, uh, her PDF, and then if I open this up, I can open it with Adobe Reader, that's free to download if you don't already have it, and I'll be able to fill it in. So there are loads of pages in this. I suggest you keep the same file 
for Susie and you just get as far as you get. So you can email this to the parent each week and they can just check the latest one with the latest date. So let's say it's the 28th of May and I'm going to write in any details I want here. So again, she's doing C major scale and dance. Something like this. So I'd fill that out before Susie's lesson with the date and just save it. And then I can email it to the parents at the end of each lesson so that they know to hop over and check it there. I said I would have three different options for you and I'm not going to let you down. The third option is to just do it the way you always do it. So if you normally just write in a notebook, if you like a paper and pen, that's absolutely fine. What I want you to do is just write it out the way you normally would during your online lesson. Just have your notebook and your paper and pencil in front of you during the online lesson. Write it down as usual if that's the way you're comfortable and then just take a photo with your phone and email it to the parents of your students. It's that simple. Don't let this piece of technology be the thing that's stressing you out. If you already have so much whirring around your mind in terms of setting up online lessons and using all that tech, then don't let this thing be the thing that stresses you out. Just use a notebook, just use a paper and pencil or whatever you usually use. Now, that's three different options, so we have those resources available for you if you need them. Have fun, best of luck, and I'll chat to you soon.